What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past week or so, lots of topics to discuss, firstly, about the pivot position, Busquets, 99%, will lead the club in 2023, and now the club are beginning to search for his replacement, lots of names on the table, of course the main two I would say right now are Zubimendi and N'Golo Kante, but there are other names that we will discuss, and alongside a pivot, the club will also reinforce the defense with a center back and a right bat. The two main names right now are Inigo Martinez and also Arneu Martinez from Girona. The question now is, what would the club prioritize this upcoming January transfer window, a CDM, or defensive reinforcement, whether it's a center back or a right back. But the club also will keep an eye on the attacker market with the pie, of course, most likely gonna leave. Lewandowski aging. We're gonna have we have some few names to discuss, but the main name, of course, is Endrick, the new Brazilian wonder kid. Most likely Barcelona will not be able to sign him because they cannot afford him this summer since they have other priorities. And right now, Real Madrid, Paris Saint-Germain, and Chelsea are the three main teams leading the race for his signature. We also have some contrapreneurial updates on Marcus Alonso, but a big, big, big update on Alejandro Balde. Also, quick discussion about who will be the fourth captain with PK leaving. And also, a big injury update on Aruho ahead of the World Cup, which will be starting, of course, in around 10 days. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 300 likes this video be very much appreciating also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it now before we get into the video this video is sponsored by number one foot number one foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market they have fantastic qualities at fantastic prices i ordered some the other day and i got the treble winning jersey for barcelona in the 14 15 season the quality is absolutely unreal at a fantastic price Look at the badge on the jersey. It is fantastic. You have the Nike logo as well looking brilliant. It has the right tags, the right size, the right material, and it's at a fantastic price. And on their website, they do have the new Barcelona kit for this season with the Spotify logo. You can pick what badge you want on the sleeve, La Liga, Champions League. You can pick whatever number you want, whatever name you want on the back as well. And again, the material is absolutely unreal. Here I have the 2007 Champions League kit for Barcelona. As you can see, it has the the UNICEF logo, the Nike, the Barcelona badge with the camp new name around it. And if you use the discount code BOY at checkout, you do get 15% off your final order that is b-o-y use it at checkout 15 percent off and all orders over 80 dollars get free shipping as well so go down below top link in the description and get your new football kit today let's start off with the transfer news over the past week or so now firstly what we're going to discuss is what are barcelona's targets for the upcoming windows both in january and also in the summer now with jard pk retiring we do have big movements that we can make with ffp and also the salary bill in La Liga. We do have a lot of wiggle room now. That shouldn't be a concern hopefully in this upcoming window in January more specifically. And the board is going to be meeting very, very soon to discuss those plans for the upcoming window. What will be the priority? What's the budget? Who are we going to go for? Who's going to be the backup options? And of course, keep your eyes out on market opportunities as well. Mateo Aleman, Jordi Cruyff, Joseph Massip, Rafael Uste, Juan Laporta, and also Xavi will be having that one big meeting very, very soon to discuss what those transfer plans will be. Now, Sport have come out saying that Barcelona want to sign players in January. Inigo Martinez interests them the most following PK's retirement, but it is very tough, of course, to negotiate with Athletic Club. Barcelona also studying the possibility of signing a right back as well. Ed Dupolo came out saying that Jarre PK's exit makes the winter in window easier for Barcelona. His exit means you can go after several players, including a top player like Bernardo Zova, for example. Whoever comes will earn much less than PK. So we can. What Ed Dupolo is trying to say there is that we. Have have the ability to sign a Bernardo Silva level caliber player during this upcoming window. The question now is who and what position as well. Now one of the first priorities for Barcelona in the upcoming transfer windows is of course to sign a new pivot to replace the outgoing captain of the club Sergio Busquets when his contract expires with the club in 2023. We're going to go through firstly we have two options that could be on the table but most likely won't go for. Firstly is Enzo Fernandez. There are reports coming in from Portugal of course he plays for Benfica, they came out saying that Barcelona are among many clubs alongside Manchester United who are following Benfica's 
Enzo Fernandez. I believe he did move from River Plate last summer. He's doing very well for them. I think he's in the World Cup squad for Argentina as well. His market value is around 30, 35 million euros. I do believe he has a 100 million euro release clause at Benfica. Apparently, Benfica would cash out on him now for around 80, 70 million. Look, I think he's a good player. I think I would definitely keep an eye on him for the future, but at this moment, it is still a big risk, especially for the price that Benfica are asking for. But again, it's probably his agent trying to get his name out there. Maybe look for a move to United who actually need a midfielder more than we do. So oh, keep your eyes on it, but I don't think that things will happen in the imminent future. Another good option will be, of course, Yuri Tillemans, who of course also will be a free agent this summer in 2023. La Sexta came out saying that Barcelona are indeed following the development of Yuri Tielemans. Chavi loves the player. Now, I think Tielemans, I see him more, this might be a bit cliche, but I see him more as a Premier League midfielder. You know, I think he's adapted that league so, so well. It would be weird from the change. Of course, he came from, I think, the Belgium League to Leicester in the Premier League. I think he will have struggles adapting from the Premier League to La Liga. I think again it being a free uh, free agent deal, there's no risk really whatsoever. So I wouldn't mind the deal depending on what his wage will be and what the agent bonus and the player sign on bonus will be as well. But definitely an option to look out for since he will be a free agent. But the free agent in the pivot position who Barcelona want the most without a shadow of a doubt is Ingolo Conte. Now Mateo Morito from Relivo came out saying that Ingolo Conte is a profile that Antonio Conte likes a lot. Of course, Conte coached him at Chelsea back in 2016-2017, I believe. Tottenham could be a rival to Barcelona in the race with the midfielder whose contract expires in 2023. As of this current moment, the favorite in the pivot position is Conte simply on the fact that he's free. It's still quite unknown what Barcelona's budget will look like uh, in the summer apparently in the winter market we will have a fairly amount around 50 million euros which will we spend all of it maybe probably not we'll have to wait and see but apparently this summer there's not gonna be that much money there's gonna be probably i would say just under 100 million euros is what we're expecting will be like last summer with all the economic levers so with the you know, budget being very lackluster, the club are looking at free agents. Of course, Mateo Edemont hinted about it in the last General Assembly, saying, look, we got to capitalize on the free market. That's going to be our main, you know, priority, you know, section of the window. So I would keep your eyes on Conte for sure. Would I take him? I think it's a huge risk, even though he's a free agent. He's very injury prone. I still don't believe he's a Barcelona pivot, so to speak. But if Xavi wants him, if Xavi thinks he can get, uh, you know, use at the player, I'll back the manager. And again, we'll have to wait and see. But again, current moment, N'Golo Kante is the favorite, but the main priority, the dream player Barcelona had, you know, unlimited checkbook, unlimited money. The one player they would go for is Martin Zubamendi. Now, Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Busquets will leave the club next season and Martin Zubamendi is Xavi's favorite to replace him. He has a 60 million euro release clause and negotiating with La Real won't be easy and Barcelona cannot sign him in January due to FFP. Ruben Neves is also another option. Sport also came out saying that Xavi already made it clear that the player he sees as Sergio Busquets' replacement is Martin Zubamendi. Barcelona knows that his incorporation will not be easy because it's always difficult to negotiate with La Real, Real Sociedad. They always get the money that they want, like Napoli, Bruce Dortmund. They set a price, either take it or leave it. The club also points out a detail. Despite renewing his contract until 2027, his release clause remained at 60 million euros, and this is not a coincidence, they say, without ruling out that there's already have been some conversations with the player. Also, according to Sport, Jordi Cruyff is in contact with Zubamendi's entourage, and apparently he has a very good relationship with them as well. Look, I think 60 million euros for Zubamendi is overpriced. I think he's worth around 40. I'd put it in maybe a couple million euros in variables. We're looking at maybe 45, 50 as, at the most I would pay as a total package. I think he is a good player. And if, hey, if it's, one, if, it's, if it's the one that Chavi wants, you have to give the manager what he wants. If you give him a Conte, he'll start complaining. Oh, I want to zoom Mendy. Oh, look, here's Conte. Oh, look, he's out for four months. I want to zoom Mendy. You don't want to give managers the escape option. We want to give him Zubamendi, Mendy. And then if he flops, you blame Chavi. Then you sack him if need be, all that sort of stuff. So we'll wait and see with the pivot. This will be a very, very delicate decision for Barcelona. We have not needed a top pivot since 2009 when we of course promoted Sergio Busquets. Since then we've signed so many players, the likes of Alex Song and 
We had Sergi Samper, and uh, I mean, I don't even want to go through the list. There's been quite some stinkers, so this is going to be the first time Barcelona go for a pivot where we do need a big name and a big player. And at the moment, the dream and the favorite, you could say, is Zubamendi, but the most likely option at the moment is N'Golo Kante. Now, alongside the pivot, the club want to also reinforce the defense in the upcoming transfer windows as well, more specifically in the center back department with, of course, PK retiring and as we all knew from last summer the main name for Barcelona to replace Busquets is Indigo Martinez. Fernando Polo and Fran Martinez from Deportivo came out saying that Indigo Martinez will be an option for January if Athletic Club will sell him for cheap price and if he does not have any knee issues. Personal terms again are already agreed and peak his retirement generates of course that salary space that we need to sign him. Now I see this debate going online. I want to get your thoughts as well. I also share my thoughts. What is the point of spending money on Indigo Martinez. Yes, we've had you know injury problems at the back. Conde, Christensen, Arujo, and even Eric Garcia, all our four center backs, have been injured at some point this season. That is true. But why invest in someone who, 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 who you can get for free in six months? I much rather trust Chadi Riyad for six months than sign Martinez paying 10 million, whatever the case may be, to get him six months early. That's just my opinion. I've seen some uh, journalists in, this, in the media as well say that. Let me think about that down in the comments below. Again, the price, there's no rumors about the price. All we know is that it's going to be a small fee if we do go for him in January, if we do want to get him early. But again, in January, he still cannot sign a pre-contract with Barcelona because we are, of course, a Spanish club. In January, he can sign a pre-contract agreement with any other club outside of Spain. But in Spain, he has to wait until his contract expires. Now, alongside the center back, the club are also in the market for a right back. We talked about, you know, Vanderson, Diego Dolo, but there has been a new name that we've heard before, but now there's been like a big resurgence of that name, and it is Arnau Martinez. Now, can the city of Kamal saying that in the winter, Barcelona is looking for a midfielder, idea, boys, because the idea is to leave the club at the end of the season, a left footed center back in Indigo Martinez, and also a right back that could be maybe in the summer. But right now, the right back that Chavi likes the most is Arnau Martinez. Now, if you don't know, Arnau Martinez used to play for Barcelona. He was part of La Masia, I believe, back in. I think he's part of that Eric Garcia generation, like 2010, 2011, with Ansu Fati as well. He left. He's now playing, of course, at Girona, and he's doing very well. Of course, got them promoted last season, also in La Liga so far this year. He's doing very well. Now, with Arnel Martinez, he can also play at center back, predominantly at right back, but can play at center back. You could say a Jules Kunde profile in that sense. I would rather buy Arnau Martinez for, you know, 10, 50 million euros, then sign Inigo Martinez in January. That's just my opinion. I'd rather trust Chad Riyad in that sense, but I think Arnau Martinez with his versatility could be a good option for Barcelona. But I think Barcelona do, do need a top profile player in the right back position, very similar to the pivot like I just mentioned. It's been so many years since we signed a top name player at right back. We've had, you know, Nelson Smedu and Hector Bellerin and Emerson Royale and the list is just dreadful since Danny Alves. Even Danny Alves had to come back and replace himself and he did a better job than the majority of those right backs. So we do need a big profile name, but I think Arnel Martinez could be that decent backup option. So we'll have to wait and see. But there was a right back, of course, that we were linked with in the last uh, transfer window in the summer that we almost signed, but in the end we could not reach an agreement with his club. And that is, of course, Juan Foyth. Now, Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that a Barcelona scout watched Juan Foyth and also Jorge Cuenca in Villarreal's match against Espanyol on Tuesday. I think it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm, I don't forget the date. Anyways, scouts were watching them. Of course, Jorge Cuenca, just like Arnaud Martinez, he used to play at La Masia. We did sell him, I think, to Getafe and then Villarreal bought him. So he's been through quite a through few clubs uh, since. Of course, Juan Foyth, high profile player, can play at right back. And center back as well. I'll keep your eyes on Juan Foyth. I think if he's available for a good price, the club will be looking at him very uh, highly. They do like the player. We've been following him for a long time. He is, you know, a few steps above Arnaud Martinez currently in terms of his, you know, development and how, uh, you know, big of a stance he is as a player. He's, of course, going with Argentina to the World Cup as well. So, look, the options are there. You have Enrique Martinez, Martinez, Juan Foyth, maybe even Jorge Cuenca. The question now is really for Barcelona is who's the priority? Is it the center back or the right back? Who are the players that are top of that list? And also, what is the budget and the price of these players? But the, but the, but the names are there. The question now is really who will the club go for? 
Personally, I think you're looking at Arnaud Martinez and Juan Foy simply because of their versatility and also for the fact we do need some right back coverage. I want to see Alejandro Bolde play more in his natural position at left back and Jordi Alba will move on. They can have Alonso as backup. Bellerin is dead water. Let's be honest, he came in as a you no know, quick fix. He, you know, it's a free agent deal. We're not going to make anything on him. We won't lose anything on him. So it's understandable. So we need someone to replace him. Cesar Roberto will leave as well. So the right back position, in my opinion, right now, it should be a priority over the center back. So we'll see what the club decide. But again, there are names and options on the table right now. The question now is, what will the club decide? Now, a position for Barcelona at the moment that isn't the priority right now, but they will definitely look into and keep an eye on the market is the striker department. Of course, Lewandowski is aging. Depay wants to leave, can leave, has only six months off in this contract. So the club do have to keep an eye on a striker for the future. And we have been linked with quite a few. Firstly, Jao Felix. I mean, I don't like, I don't want to do business with Atletico Madrid anymore. I really don't, but... Joao Felix is a good player, and as we all knew, we knew this before Joao Laporte became the president. He is a huge, huge, huge fan of the player. There are reports coming in from the Madrid media saying that Barcelona and Atletico Madrid are working on two deals. So two different players. <laughs> I don't know. And one of them is Joao Felix. Jorge Mendes is working on this deal. As we all know, Jorge Mendes and Joao Laporta do have an excellent relationship and that will be on the table. But the good thing right now is that what we're hearing is that PSG is leading the race for Jao Felix. Keep your eyes on Messi, by the way, because, you know, Felix can't come in with Neymar and Mbappe and also have Messi, you know, it's like Messi coming, you know. So keep that in mind. So with Felix, I think our name is only being chucked in there right now because we all know the president likes him and that Barcelona do like the player as well. But I think the operation, the cost, and dealing with Atletico Madrid is just way, way too difficult. And like I've already mentioned, we have other priorities. But of course, with other players, you could consider them one free agent for that we have been linked with that could, you know, directly replace Memphis. You know, one free, uh, one free in, one free out. Is Wilfred Bloody Zaha? The Evening Standard in the UK have come out saying that Barcelona are interested in signing Wilfred Zaha from Crystal Palace. He will be a free agent in 2023, as things currently stand. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. No, he, he, Zaha is a, is a player who wants to be the star. He can go to, you know, Betis, Villarreal, be the main name and do well. But when he's on the bench at Barcelona and, you know, playing second field to Lewandowski, he won't do too well. We saw that when he was at United. He, you know, was a good player. He went there, wasn't the, the, the main guy. He left, he went to the Crystal, back to Crystal Palace, did well. I think if he goes to, you know, for example, off the top of my head, like in Everton, he would do well because he'd be the star player. Maybe even a West Ham, he has some good players around him, but he'll still be the star player. I don't really see him doing well at Barcelona. Also, you know, a player coming from the Premier League to La Liga, English, although he does represent uh, Ivory Coast. I don't think that will fly very well. So keep your eyes on it. Free agent again. We're going to be desperate. We're going to be linked with every single decent free agent, I would say. Because, you know, Zaha is a good player, but I just personally wouldn't take him at Barcelona. So... I would say keep your eyes on it, but like one eye with like a little bit of a squint in there because I don't think it'll happen. But the forward, any forward in the world that I can sign right now, that's of course feasible that I would pick. And I think the majority of you would pick as well is the forward and the new Brazilian wonder kid coming out of South America. He's supposed to be the next big thing. You know, you had Neymar, you had Vinicius, you had Rodrigo, and then now you have Endrick. He's doing very well with Palmeiras, and he will Palmeiras, Palmeiras, and he will be available this summer for a price. Now, Joaquin Pereira, of course, number one source for Barcelona news surrounding Brazilian players. He's, of course, always right. He's been very, very good over the past few years. He writes for sport. He came out saying that Barcelona have already informed Andrew's agent that they will not be able to make a move for him this coming summer in 2023. They were the best placed team a few months ago, but now the priority is to invest in a right back and a midfielder. I'm going to sit and clap this. I do want Endrick. I I really, really do. But the fact that the club are prioritizing what we do really need the most, a pivot and a right back, I'm okay with it. You, I, I, But I want to see you go out there and get top players in that position because we're going to miss on a big player here. I think Endrick is the next big thing. We haven't signed a Brazilian wonder kid since Neymar. And I think if he goes to Real Madrid, they'll have a front three of Endrick, Rodrigo, and Vinicius. And we're going to have to come up against that. And that will be very, very unfortunate. Now, also for Bitsi Romano. For Bitsi Romano, as we all know, top two, I would say, maybe even the best journalist in the world around football. He's also very, very close with Endrick's entourage. He came out saying that Real Madrid, Paris Saint-Germain, and Chelsea are the three clubs that are pushing hard to sign Endrick this 
summer they are ahead of all the other clubs but there's no official bid yet to Palmeiras, but it will be happening soon his release clause is 60 million euros and Endrick would join in 2024 now Romano also spoke to his father as well and released a quote publicly he came out saying this is coming in now from Endrick's father he said as of this current moment there's nothing decided with Real Madrid or any other club where no preference yet we will decide in the next months the club that will pay what Palmeiras won and show us the best technical project will sign the boy so whoever pays up most and also convinces them with the sporting project will get Endrick. I'm very very disappointed I really want the player but if there's other priorities I do understand that and you know what there'll be another Brazilian kid uh, wonder kid at some point I know that's a bit cliche to say but that's the reality there will be another one coming up soon I'm disappointed in losing him but the f I, I hope I hope the club can do something in the sense that, look, can we agree on a price this summer and then just pay it next summer? Because again, he's still 16, 17, so he cannot join a European team until he's 18 anyway. So all these clubs, Real Madrid, PSG, and Chelsea, what they were going to do this summer is buy him this summer, then loan him straight back to Palmeiras for one more year, but then they'll give the money to Palmeiras straight away. Can Barcelona do that with what we did previously with the, with the previous thing that we did with Neymar and Santos and us not being able to pay back stuff recently? So... Uh, I wish we could, but I'll say until it's done, you never know. I'll, I'll remain faithful, but at the moment for Endrick to Barcelona, it ain't looking too good. Let's now discuss the player who has been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past week or so. There's been only one player, and that player is the big one in my opinion, Memphis Depay. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that everything indicates that Barcelona will try to sell Memphis Depay in January, the player has no intentions of renewing his contract beyond 2023 either. Memphis wants to leave as a free agent to collect a signing bonus. So the club want to sell him despite the fact we have an agreement to terminate his contract right this very second. They want to try and sell him, but the player wants to leave for free to get a big bonus. The way I see it is this. Unless we bring someone in January, like what I mean by that is, you know, an Abamyang, Luke De Jong, Adama Traore 2.0, like a loan by option, I would not let Memphis leave. We need the squad depth, and I think on the left wing, he can provide something very unique for Chavi off the bench, or maybe even some starting roles. We're going to be playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, every single week from January until May. We need squad death. If we get, if we let him, if we let him go, whether it's for free, or, we're not gonna sell him. Let's be honest. No, if there's a club that's idiotic that would pay like five million for him, I would sell him because they're re they're retarded. You just wait for free, or you can just force us to terminate his contract right now because we do have an agreement with the player. Dumb. If we get any money for him, I will take it. But I would keep him because we need him. Squad death is gonna be important. We're gonna compete for La Liga, Super Cup, Copa, and hopefully the Europa League as well. We will need Memphis. We are hearing currently that Manchester United apparently have a pre-agreement with Memphis and also Tottenham Hotspur are interested. So Premier League clubs, I wouldn't sell Memphis unless we get a fee. I would not do it. And I think if we do do it, we have to bring in a replacement. We cannot just rely on Lewandowski, Ferran, Ansu Dembele, Rafinha, just them five for the entire season. We will get injuries. We need to sign someone. I would look at bringing back a Bamiang. <laughs> He's not doing too well at Chelsea. I mean, if they're really interested, I, I would, you know, put it out there. You never know. Shout out, Alba. I love you. Hopefully, if, if you want to come home, you can come home anytime you want. So, we'll wait and see with Memphis. I think it's definitely going to be on the table. I think he might most likely push for it if he does not get that much game time, which is understandable, but I would hold on to it. But let's hope the club can deal with the situation very, very delicately. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on the contract renewal of Alejandro Balde, which is the priority of the club. Not Usman Dembele, but Alejandro Balde. Sport came out saying that Barcelona is working on Alejandro Balde and negotiating with his agent, Jorge Mendez. In principle, there should be no problem to renew his contract until 2027 and also have a first team number. As you all saw, probably I would expect over the past two weeks or a week and a half, the Barcelona, not the Bar Barcelona, have done the redesign of the new locker room. And you can see that Gavi is sitting in the locker of number six, Balde number 12, and Naki Pena number 13, also Pablo Torre at 16. So despite them four on paper being B team players, they will most likely be promoted in January 
to the first team. I think Balde is in that sense, and that 100% should be the priority for the club. And also Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Barcelona have been very clear in recent internal talks and planning. Alejandro Balde is considered an important player for the present and the future of the club. Discussions are expected to take place on his contract situation in the next few weeks. The goal for Balde is simple in my opinion, in my view. It should be done before the new year. A month and a half, World Cup, unless he gets called off for Spain. It is likely. I wouldn't say it's a high chance, but he's, his name is definitely being in there. You know, on the, with the likes of Jordi Alba, Jose Gaia, Danny Carvajal. He could definitely be in that uh, squad list. I have no uh, doubt about that. If he's not in the squad list, I expect that renewal to be done by the end of this year. The club can do it, and we have to do it. We have other renewal priorities. Memphis, Inaki, Orneu. Memphis, there's other private markets, Alonso, Bellerin, we gotta move on. I don't want to have, you know, 50 million renewals next year. That's not how the club works. We gotta, you know, space them all out. And I think Ball Days right now is the most important because he's so, so important for this team. Alonso and Uzban Dembele as well, but his Dembele's will be more complicated. Ball Day, La Masia, born and bred. He loves the club and he wants to stay. He's, he's living his dream and that's the reality of it. So hopefully we can get that done as soon as possible. But again, the priority right now for renewals is Alejandro Ball Day and the club want to get that done as soon as possible. The final contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Marcus Alonso. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit on the fence on this one. I wouldn't really decide on it now. I'd wait till the end of the season in my opinion, but the club are planning to renew the contract of Alonso as per the request of the coaching staff. It is Xavi and his brother Oscar Hernandez and the other coach Sergi Allegri that is asking for the renewal of Alonso and apparently Barcelona are considering offering him a two-year renewal i think that's quite a bit i think it should be one year but apparently two years is on the table now alonso did an interview with mundo portivo and he's asked whether or not he would like to say a barcelona renew he said hopefully the renewal depends on the club but i'm going to fight to continue here and help the team <laughs> of course he wants to stay that's not you know reality check you know sky is blue grass is green he wants to stay very very obvious but it's really concerning for me that the coaches, the coaching staff want him to stay. I don't know why. I don't know if he's good in training. He provides something in the dressing room. I have no idea. But on the pitch, to be fair, center back, he's done a job. But I left back dead. Absolutely dead. So we'll wait and see. I would personally wait until, you know, March, April time. See how he does. And the coaching staff really insist on it. You got to back them. Like I said, when we signed Alonso last summer, if he flops, you blame Chavi. He was the one that was pushing, pushing, pushing pushing for him. Laporta didn't say, yeah, La Lima said, yeah, but you know what? The coach asked for it. He knows more about football. Here's the player that you wanted. So, wait and see on Alonso, but at the moment, the plan is to offer him a renewal. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past week or so. Firstly, on the topic of the new captain. As we all know, Pique has retired. There is now one spot open for the captaincy and now we'll move up for everything. So Busquets will be number one, of course. He'll stay number one. Roberto will now be the second captain. Jordi Alba will be now the third captain. The question now is who will be the fourth captain. Now, Sport have come out saying that all first team members will collectively make a decision on who will take PK's spot for the captain's armband. Lewandowski and Terstegen are both serious options on the table. If it's anyone but Terstegen, I'll give everyone who likes this video $100. I also did a tweet on this as well. Go retweet the tweet if, you know, somehow this doesn't happen. I will give everyone who likes this video $100 if any other player besides Ter Stegen gets that armband. Look, Lewandowski, is, is he Catholic material? Absolutely. But he can't speak Spanish. He can't speak Catalan. He's been in the club for damn near, what, three or four months. He ain't ready for the armband. Let's be real. It has got to be Ter Stegen, he's been at the club since 2014. We're coming on nearly 10 years. Speaks fluent fan uh, Spanish. Uh, Catalan is, uh, you know, it's getting there to be fair to him, and he knows a lot about the club as well. He's been through some, you know, very good highs and probably one of the worst, the worst of the worst lows as well. So it's got to be him. Let's be honest. Anyone else, I'll be shocked. So we'll wait and see. I think the club will announce it in the uh, whether they'll announce it before the start of the season that we start back again against Espanol or during the World Cup break. No idea. Maybe it'll just be leaked in the media. Chavi confirms it in a press conference. Conference. We'll wait and see, but there will be a new fourth captain, which will be decided by the first team members. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video 
video is give you guys one big injury update around the first team at Barcelona and that is on Ronald Arujo. Now with Arujo, he has officially been called up to the Uruguay World Cup squad despite the fact that he's injured. I will now explain the situation. Arujo is expected to be fit once Uruguay finish their first three group stage matches at the World Cup. If Uruguay progress, Arujo can play. What the agreement is now between Barcelona and the Uruguay Federation is that a doctor of, with Barcelona will be with Uruguay and Arujo at the World Cup. And once he gives the green light, Arujo can play. And again, most likely it will not be for any three of the group stage matches. I believe they face um, Portugal, South Korea, and Cameroon or Ghana, one of them, I forget which one it is. I think it's Ghana. So one of them, I think it is Ghana because Asamoah Jean did a documentary about or uh, about Suarez's handball. So I think it's Ghana, South Korea, and also Portugal. I don't think he'll play any of those three games. Maybe the final game, I don't know which one that's against. Maybe he could play there, but he's basically there just for vibes, I feel like. Uruguay most likely will progress to the round 16. And if they do, they can play him, I guess. That's going to be the deal that Barcelona and the Uruguay Federation has. But at this current moment... He's still injured, no official green light from Barcelona, but that will come during the World Cup, and that's why the coach has taken him, because he could be fit later on. So if he is, then fair enough to him, I'll wait and see how that goes, but I would expect Arjo to play in any three of the first three matches at the World Cup for Uruguay. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past week or so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, and of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to refer Firstly, of course, is on the CDM position. Who would you sign? Would you go for Neves, Zubimendi, Conte, Tielemans, maybe even Enzo Fernandez? Secondly, on the defensive reinforcement, what would you prioritize a center back in Nico Martinez or a right back in Arnaud Martinez, maybe even Juan Foy to cover both sides? And also, lastly, on Endrick, would you try and sign him this summer despite the fact we have other priorities like a right back and a pivot? Or would you try to compete with Real Madrid and PSG and Chelsea to sign him for next summer 2024 and then loan him back to Palmeiras this upcoming summer in 2023? And of course, make sure you get subscribed down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>